Hello and welcome. You are watching the Global Poker League Summer Series live from Las Vegas. Yesterday, we saw Joao Samao of the Sao Paulo Mets defeat Raiden Khan of the Hong Kong Stars two games to one. For Andre Akari's team today, we have another great match lined up for you. It is the New York Rounders versus the Berlin Bears. And today in the cube, Kevin McPhee will be taking on Brian Rast. Hello, my babies, and welcome to the Global Poker League Summer Series live in Las Vegas. I am Uncle Daddy Joe Stapleton. He is Eric Danis, although we may have decided, what was my new nickname yesterday? The Unbackable Favorite? Yes, I like that. I kind of like that a lot. Thank you very much <laughs> to uh, Troy Martin for dropping that one on me on Facebook. We are back for more live Heads Up action from the Cube. Today, we've got the Berlin Bears going up against the New York Rounders, and what two members of those teams are we looking at today? Yeah, Brian Rast, who is coming off a uh, WSOP final table, eighth place finish in the 10K limit event uh, just a few hours ago last night. He jumped into another 10K, Joe, and made a day two, so he'll be oh, rushing out of here. Oh, God. Must be tough. He's playing Kevin McPhee, and McPhee's actually uh, in the third player to be a subbed in in the last 24 hours, Joe. It's been a whirlwind. Bryn Kenny was supposed to be here, but Bryn Kenny decided to make his way to Oakland last night, uh, really, like a last-minute trip to Oakland just, just to see <laughs> his favorite player, LeBron James, you know, win the, uh, the I, mean, I forget what it's called, the Larry O'Brien trophy. Uh, so, you know, tough life. I mean, if only he had waited for the Cavs to win, spoiler alert, they That's were right. here. That's they right. showed up here last night. He could, I mean, they probably passed each other. That's right. In the air or something. <laughs> yeah, poor Brendan is, is stuck in Oakland while the Cavs are here having a So let's a give him a time. round of applause, though, for Kevin McPhee, huh, for coming yeah, Kevin in. Kevin McPhee, who's actually replacing Jason Mercier. Right, yeah. Mercier was supposed to make his cube debut, but Mercier has also made a day two. We couldn't get Mercier. Come yeah, on, he's made another day two. Maybe if we if he wins a bracelet tomorrow, then we'll see him the rest of the You're summer. You're not going to get him until the, there are no more bracelets right. left to be won like that. I'm sorry, but no, no, uh, I got gotcha. you. You know, you might want to try during not WSOP bracelet hunting season to get Jason Mercier on this show. We do have, by the way, I gave Kevin McPhee a big round of applause only because he's been here a couple times already in the cube. Uh, Brian Rast also obviously getting up in the morning yeah. uh, for this. Now, it may be a little confusing because both guys playing are American, but only one of them is playing for the American team, and that's Kevin McPhee. He's playing for the New York Rounders. Let's take a look at the American standings on the GPL. Yeah, we see the Nats still on top, obviously, with 121 points. The Sunset are in the cube tomorrow. Joe Chance Cornuth back in the spotlight tomorrow. Sao Paulo Mets enjoying an, a terrific summer. They've won eight of nine games so far, so really a ton of points. They're 24 points total here in Las Vegas for the Mets. Andre Akari, a very, very happy man. Uh, the Rounders, here they are, Joe. Now 13 points. They're really starting to, to lose ground on the Mets, so they'll need the full nine points today to even come close. The good news is that they still have a 13-point lead on a playoff spot. The bad news is that those moneymakers have played uh, you know, fairly well in the cube, so we'll have to see what happens next. And the San Fran Rush at 78 points. They get to be in the cube later on this week. And in a uh, in a little while after that, Kitty Kuo will make her cube debut later on this summer, and we're you're all just, excited about that. You're just going to keep dropping She's Kitty the best. I don't She's think my favorite player. I, I think we plugged Aaron Paul less than you're plugging Kitty, Kitty Kuo in the next couple of weeks. I'm fine with that. Um, you did say the moneymakers have done well in the cube. That's only because of Scott Ball, really. So yeah. let's... Um, Jonathan Little's had a good uh, John Little, good too, that's there. right. Yeah. But now that those two ringers are out of the way, who <laughs> knows right. what's left for the moneymakers, especially because Chris is going to show up. He's going to have the bagel hung on him. <laughs> Let's take it the Eurasian standings. Yeah, and as we saw yesterday, three big points from the Hong Kong Stars. They would have liked more in order to be first, uh, you know, getting up this morning. But they are second, Joe, only one point out of first. The Moscow Wolverines, Anatoly Filatov, uh, picking up six big points uh, just a few days ago on Friday. Those Royals now sit, sorry, London Royals now sit at 100 points. Uh, they've been at 100 for quite some time now. They'll need some uh, some points soon. The Paris Aviators, here they are with 92 points. Rumored uh, sighting of Davidi Kitai maybe later on this week. We'll have to see what happens there. But uh, Kitai would be uh, necessary. 
necessary uh, selection here as Paris has really not fared so well in the last few weeks. And then the Bears and the Rome Emperors, here they stand. The Bears are in the cube today. We mentioned Brian Rast. A lot of points needed for that team to be uh, back in a playoff race. All right, well, let's not waste any more time. These two guys got themselves out of bed. They've been walking around here groggy-eyed all morning. <laughs> let's hear from them. They're on the floor with Laura Cornelius. Thanks, Joe. I'm here with Brian Rast, who makes his debut in the Cube today. Are you excited? Yes, I'm thrilled. I can see the Cube behind me. It's, it's ready for some poker action this morning, so let's do that. Kevin McPhee has been in the Cube before, though, so do you feel he may have a slight edge, or you're not bothered about it? I think he clearly has a huge edge, but I'm going to work really hard to overcome that with uh, <laughs> get over the green, green back hump, you know? Let's do it. You're a bear. You bears kind of live this crazy life, you know. Sir Ram yeah. was here not that long ago. He doesn't let much phase him. Are you going to be like that too? Yeah. I, I also don't let much phase me. Not even the fact that he has more experience than me. That, <laughs> I've already forgotten about it. Talking of experience, t tell us about your WSOP because you've uh, made a final table. Uh, that's been going I, pretty well for you. I, I did, although <laughs> coming in eighth is not something you usually... Uh, remember very much. I'll tell you when that one won't make it into my memory banks for, for future reference. But I mean, you know, it's good. It's, I got some money back. It was only like a 110 person tournament. So eighth is not that far away from min cash. But yeah, I did get, I guess I made the final table, but it was yesterday. I'm not too happy with it right now, but uh, you know, I, it's better than not cashing, I guess. So of course. Yeah. It was a limit tournament. It was, yeah, yeah. limit hold'em, uh, which, you know, I don't play as many limit tournaments, but, you know, it was cool. It was a good experience. Uh, I thought I both played pretty well, learned a lot of things as the tournament went on, so, yeah. Well, forget the limit stuff. This one's no limit. Back in the cube. Uh, yeah. We're going to be seeing Brian Rath make his debut very, very soon in game one of three. Best of luck to you. Thank and, you. And uh, we'll chat to you after the first game. Back to you guys at the desk. Man, how do you not love Brian Rass? He's like just him. the most likable dude ever. Even the first few seconds here, he was like barely awake. And then like within a minute or two, he was like everybody's buddy out in the office. Love having Brian Rass around. I uh, I first heard of him way back at the big game. He was like, a, wow. I forget who it was. Someone like Phil Locke. Somebody was like, you got to have this guy, Brian Rass, on blah, blah, blah. And we tried to get him. And he came, I believe, straight from like a really big game with Manny Pacquiao. He'd been playing in like a big oh. cash game with Pacquiao all night long. Then shows up to play the big game. The guy was a trooper back then. He's a trooper now. Just won that massive uh, prop bet where he had to cycle through Vegas. Yeah. Went 30 more miles than Blazarian and yeah. uh, didn't draft and... Just completely owned it. He looks like he hasn't had a meal since then, though. That's right. That's right. It's been he's rough. A very, he's a very thin since guy. Then, yeah. so we, want to, we want to make sure that we uh, we we get Brian something to eat, maybe possibly ready by the him, end yeah. of the day today. Uh, of course, he's going to be facing Kevin McPhee. Lots of people weighing in on that, by the way, on Twitch and on Twitter. You can get in touch with us, twitch.tv slash GPL, or tag your tweets, GPL. Uh, John Newcomb said that uh, Kevin McPhee was going to, I forget what he said, wipe the floor? Oh, with uh, Brian Rast. Wow. Eat up. He's going to eat up Rast. Well, you know, McPhee really had a fine performance in his cube debut. Uh, you know, a little rough start to the season. He had been shut out in two six max matches. We've talked about it at nauseum. Not, not the best of luck there for McPhee in those two matches, but really shined uh, about a week ago now, about 10 days ago in the cube in his first match. And it's funny you mentioned Rast was coming in a little sleepy. And then once the cameras are on, he's on. It's the same thing with McPhee. He was very tired last time, but why? As soon as those cameras turned on, he was a great show and one of my favorite players in the Cube so far. He's got that winning smile. I wonder if he uh, still does the old cowboy face. That's uh, what oh, yeah. he used to call the uh, that little st that little stare down that he used to do on the EPT. It was cowboy face with the... Uh, I used to call him Officer McPhee, <laughs> which was great at the time, except for then I realized how many people wear those glasses, and then I right. burned that gag. Like I, they're gonna, I can't call like every single guy that wears aviators, officer, Officers. whoever... Are aviators allowed, by the way, on uh, the GPL? We'd rather not. You'd like to see those pretty faces, but uh, yeah, we'll we'll have to look into that. I think we need. Uh, it seems like one of those things with what you're trying to, what we're trying to do here. <laughs> I'm part of the team. I'm not just a hired gun. Don't worry about that. Uh, that is part of it is that you know. Um, 
the no hat, no sunglasses. Let's uh, let's make this a little more inviting to the world. Yeah, and we we talk a lot about uh, marketing, and you know, we, we saw the NBA finals last night where the players you see their faces compared to other sports like hockey, for example, where they have helmets and visors, and it's a little harder to sell those players. Uh, so yeah, we're we're trying, of course, to to sell that. Uh, Brian Rass would know the Super High Roller Bowl where there's no glasses allowed, and you have to be uh, dressed to the nines. Here we uh, we want a little more sporty atmosphere, Joe, because it is 180 degrees degrees in here so having players in tuxedos might not be the best of solutions you know those players they all look the same to me <laughs> the hockey players wearing helmets don't yes don't get, get don't you. get all nervous uh speaking of uh, guys that look similar we've got another handsome white boy on the floor right now <laughs> kevin mcphee with laura cornelius thanks joe Kevin McPhee with me right now, second time in the Cube. Talk us through the first time with Tim Adams. It was a win after a bit of a disappointing start online for you. And one of Eric's favorite matches so far. Uh, yeah, it was pretty fun. Uh, Tim, Tim was uh, kind of a noob with the software and had kind of the logistics of everything. So I was trolling him a little bit a couple times. It was like one time I had the nuts and I was like, oh, I don't know what to do. OK, I call. And then I'm in raised. And, we ended up getting it in. It probably didn't matter anyways, but uh, yeah, we had a pretty good match. It's extremely hot in there, so uh, I promised myself that I'd bring myself a change of clothes this time, but unfortunately I didn't do that, so There's probably going to be sweating through this. <laughs> yeah. We've got the shower, don't forget. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> Are you going to be trolling Brian Rass much? Uh, no, I don't think so. I have a lot of respect for <laughs> Brian Rass. I mean, he's a world-class player. Uh, I don't know him very well, but uh, you know, everybody's got the biggest respect for him, and he's a much better opponent than I am, so I'm just going to go in there and hopefully uh, my familiarity with the software will help me out a little bit and hopefully I'll just get the blinds big and get lucky. So. And you are stepping in the last minute as well, we have to mention, for Brinkenny, your manager, because he just wanted to go and see some kind of basketball match going on last night, right? Yeah, well, I know Bryn, <laughs> Bryn had been betting pretty big on the Cavs series. Uh, once, once Golden State was up 3-1, I went out and had some pizza and beers with them to watch uh, Game 5. and. He was sweating it really hard, and I was like, how much money do you have on this? He wouldn't tell me, but uh, he, I think he won enough that he went out to go watch Game 7. <laughs> so, yeah, that's enough. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I'm a last-minute sort of sub. I think they're trying to get Jason to come in, but Jason's uh, obviously chasing player of the year and yeah, $1.8 million. Winning dollars, so, yeah, I'm a poor man's uh, Jason Mercier, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> we don't look at it like that. Uh, right, we are about to see Kevin McVie, Brian Rust, in the Cube, getting geared up. Best of luck to you, Thank you. for this first game in the Cube. Back to you guys. I mean, he might be a poor man's Jason Mercer here, but he's a rich man's Alan Kessler. So, uh, well you know, we got, we got that going for us. Everybody's an upgrade from somebody. I don't want to pick a team to win this GPL championship in London, Joe, but if Kevin McPhee's a poor man, Jason Mercier, the New York Rounders are looking they're, pretty good. That's a pretty, a pretty good pretty roster. Good team. Yeah. Hey, by the way, speaking of uh, the NBA Finals last night, who won the MVP? Was it LeBron or was it the referees from Game 6? Damn! LeBron James, sir. King James, was, as I like to LeBron, call him. It was LeBron, because I feel like he was maybe only secondary in that and whole as, equation. And as you were laughing at me yesterday for my love for the city of Cleveland, it is very genuine, and I was very happy to see the city of Cleveland finally winning something since 1964. No, they've been winning, like, the murder rate and poverty It's not true. It's not true. They've been second in both of those things, and, you know, <laughs> maybe third. Just second. Only right. second. <laughs> So what do we have to expect from these two guys today? Kevin said that uh, he doesn't know Brian super well. That's yeah. surprising to me. It kind of felt like uh, maybe these guys would have crossed paths before. Kevin does play a lot on the European circuit. We don't see Brian too much over there. I wish we'd see him a little more often. Yeah, Everybody no. loves a Brian Rast. Brian tends to play a lot of those big nosebleed tournaments as well, where Kevin you know sticks to the 10K, 20, you know, wins 10Ks and, and lower. Right. So you know, very much winning. I love this matchup actually, Joe. I woke up to to the woke up to this matchup, of course, with uh, Mercier uh, being scratched. I like these two players a lot, you know, physically, you know, very similar, right? Two tall dudes. Okay, yeah, so we'll see what happens there. But this might be the tallest match we've seen in the GPL. And you know me, I love my <laughs> stats. We're going to check into that actually You think, after. Eric, that you would not focus on height so much. You think that you would like that well, would just not enter the equation. Well, as a very short guy, I, I do tend to focus on height. So Does that upset you when uh, on Tinder when they list a height requirement? Because I'm not even, I mean, I'm slightly taller than you, and that really upsets me. May, may I be honest? Yeah. I actually like that fact, because I personally do not mind dating a of taller you woman. Don't. No. But usually they, so actually I'm okay yeah, with that. Yeah, the girls might. See, I, yeah. when a girl asks me my height, I fire back by asking her dress size. <laughs> it's a superficial thing, everyone. It doesn't mean anything. You no. can still get stuff off the top shelf. I just get a stool. It's yeah. fine. Yeah, I like stools. It doesn't matter. All right, I guess I'm being told that we need to. 
to poker. To stop? Yeah. Apparently. So let's get down to poker to the power of three in the cube. Players, oh. enter the cube. They're already entered. Already entered the cube. You will listen for the instructions <laughs> next time. Battle begin. Dun, dun. Both players oh, start with look. stacks of 50K, blinds at two and 400, 20 minute total time bank, the and go. The McPhee actually uh, commenting that he took full advantage of a nice Tim Adams by fooling him with the software. Wouldn't expect anything different from McPhee here. That is what the rounders do, Joe, and I'm really into hey. that. They're like the bad news bears of the GPL. That was, that was the equivalent of the hidden ball I trick. Why you wouldn't want to look at your cards. <laughs> Joe, Joe we might have to step out from behind sweat, the desk you know, at the like end of the show today and show people <laughs> yeah, how color coordinated we are. <laughs> Joe and I just realizing that we look great today. <laughs> Me? I believe so. Oh. Top pair for Kevin. Oh, wow, that was a fast check. gonna read some of the uh, Twitch comments coming through while these guys are uh, feeling things out the first couple hands. Parmenides says the dress code seems a bit too uptight, but no shades is a great rule. I think that's what we're going for here. We're glad you enjoy it, Parmenides. Spammy SR says, what time do the matches start? Oh, about three minutes ago. Yeah. Those commenting on uh, maybe the player's skin tone, just one thing to keep track of. The, the lights are very white inside the cube. You'll notice Joe a different color behind the desk than he was in the cube. So that is one thing to keep track of. Although to be honest, these guys are playing 24 hours a day at the Rio, so not much sunlight. And it is 180 degrees outside, so why would you be in there? Uh, yeah, no, I think that it's just significantly different lighting between here. Th these yeah. lights make you look more tan, those lights make you look less, so huge difference. Yeah, these lights here, Joe, way more flattering to us. Casino Review says, after raving at EDM, being stuck in traffic for yeah, three hours, like a it's a good thing you could tune in for yeah. some cube. I folded one of them. Yeah. And then, but maybe I could call after folding <laughs> one. Well, Tim, yes. Tim and I were discussing the, the logistics of maybe doing the fake fold and be like, oh, what'd you have, like, fold one? And be like, oh, what'd you have? <laughs> and put a raisin. I'll let you walk it out, though. Brian does spend a lot of time in Brazil. I gave you Part a walk. Just letting us know. It is now your button. Oh. Nice. Oh, I know when they're coming down and everything. This is the song that keeps me awake at night. <laughs> Action flop here, top pair for Rasty. I hope it's okay for me to call him that. Yeah, I think so. He's in the cube, he can't hear I want to so. be friends with him so badly. You know how there's like people you just want to be friends with? Like yeah. I'm kind of friendly with like Phil Locke and Antonio now at this point, but Rast, I haven't cracked that yet. And I really want to be his friend. It was nice this morning. Uh, he, was, he was stuck around the office, yeah. talked a lot. I've already used two minutes. <laughs> Rast, by the way, very aware of his clock, Joe. He's talked about that quite some, quite a bit. Also, the point structure. He's very, very involved with the point structure, especially in six max. He's really? done a lot of research well, he, on he the points. I was gonna say he showed up here seeming to know nothing, but now yeah. all of a sudden he has questions. That's right. But I think he just <laughs> figures things out really quickly. That he does. Pedro SSM says, three awesome games coming. Let's go. Pedro's right. Pedro, you are correct, sir. This is a type of a dream matchup that you get in the GPL. Really cool to see Brian Rask and Kevin McPhee, two guys that, go. as Kevin has mentioned, have not played each other much. So. Blinds up already, three and 600 now. Rast has over 16 million in career earnings. <laughs> Not bad. I think Se I just broke the mic. 7.5 million at the okay. Super High Roller Bowl yesterday, time. last year, beating uh, <laughs> yeah, you Scott do. Seaver heads up. Got to get used to that view thing. The, the sick thing is the view thing is like right next to the call thing too. So if you're like somebody's all in and you like want to look yeah. at your cards, like literally right next to the call thing. <laughs> yeah, we mentioned through. that yesterday. We saw Raiden Khan almost press the uh, all in button. You can leave the cards up and there's almost no reason not to, I right. don't think except it does feel more natural yesterday when I was in the cube. Yes, Joe, please. 
When I played yesterday in my cube debut my and very finale. close match <laughs> with Marc Andre Ladisor, you do. I, I was inclined to keep the cards covered, and I don't, really, yeah, I don't know if it's just so that you have something to do, right? Or if that's just what you're used to, you know what I mean? When you play live poker, that you you know your cards obviously stay covered till you go to look at them. But yeah, um, oh, but there's no reason not to. Okay, we've got a suited ace for Kevin, and he flops best. Rast had two major scores at the Scoop Championship a few weeks back, finishing third in the six months. No, mm -mm, too much. It's just too much stuff. I'm crossing some of this off of his <laughs> resume. A third and an eighth. Um, no. Mm -mm. Yeah, we're just going to have to lose this eighth in the scoop. That just never happened. Okay, well, he's still at 60 million, stuff. so he's yeah. still good. <laughs> nah, this is too much. Feels like I'm playing Metroid or something. <laughs> Rest has two WSOP bracelets, including one Joe, defeating Phil Hellmuth in the 50K Players no, Championship. Mm -mm, that didn't happen either. Come on, nobody beats Phil Hellmuth. This is like a made-up guy. Video game oh, sounds. man. So intense. <laughs> like when you're camping? <laughs> Boom! See, I told you. Crushed it. McPhee comes in all uh, sleepy tired, and look at that. Boom. I've had some very good times with Kevin McPhee. Some excellent times. We went on a road trip together once. Really? One time we drove from Deauville, France to London. Oh, wow. Not just the two of us. There were some other folks in the car, but it was a good time. It's through. Clear. Oh. Gonna waka, waka, waka. Ryan Rass <laughs> folds the eight deuce. Walk it out. Casino Review asking, who's the home team? The Rounders are home. So did my feature go up in USA Today yet after yesterday or what? Because I felt like yeah, uh, that, that was a game changer for the whole league once I got in the queue. It was. I forgot to check. Uh, they <laughs> did have a reporter here. Kevin was here. So I do think it was. I, I think it was right under the LeBron MVP chat. Yeah, you know, he always told a joke. Okay. And he's like, waka waka. Oh, okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the Muppets are now. Ryan started with the best hand, has the best hand, also has the best draw. Do you think there's ever a chance Kevin bings the offsuit deuce here? Yes. Not no, this no, time. No. no, I meant to say no. No chance. King eight high, good. Suppose I could have sneezed at that pot and made them take it down. Well, I did have the king of clubs. Makes things more difficult. I think you both played it great. Oh, the blinds, the blinds just went up. <coughs> blinds go up, yep. Blinds. <laughs> yes, the blinds go up. We're doing things different here in the GPL. In this league, the blinds go up. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> McPhee on top of his game. Oh, boy. Not to be outdone, the McPhee combined live and online Sensing earnings of over 12.6 million. Not bad. Damn. I'm a Luxac online, probably one of the most uh, better known poker stars monikers. Kevin won EPT Berlin. I don't even have to look at the sheet for that. Hello. And he made, I finished second in London a couple years ago. That's correct. Joseph. Yeah, McPhee's a London, or Berlin win, sorry. His best result to date, 1.35 million. Not bad. You know, when he finished second in London, I was really gutted for him. Now, I did like the guy who won. It was awesome. This dude named Sebastian Pally, who right. actually cried. He, like, shed a yep. tear in his winter interview. He said it meant so much to him. 
Kevin seemed less disappointed than I was. <laughs> <laughs> and I really respect that. No, he's like, it's cool, man. Like, hey, maybe he's just faking it, but he faked it better than I could have. So um, I was really impressed with, uh, obviously, his play and just uh, how he handled himself in that situation. I can't imagine what it's like to to care that much and to also just come so close. Brian Rass flopping trips here. Kevin with ace high probably will pay at least one bet off. Mentioned Sebastian Pauli. He's been running fairly well at WSOP. Two uh, scored so far in a Raz event, no less. So Kevin has no draws, just ace high, drawing dead on the turn. Hey, Poppy, short, jo short jokes go to me and not. Uh, Joe, he's the tall guy in this uh, duo. Yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those insults that like I, I don't really get it. Yeah. I'm not that I'm not that short. But when I say it like that, it sounds like I'm really sensitive <laughs> about right. it. So then it seems like maybe I am short. Tell us how you really feel. So Brian's still with the best hand. Uh, Niley four four seven, who says Stapes won like fifteen k in a Vegas game not long ago. I think he uh, no, that was not me. You know. I've definitely never won 15K at anything. I don't even win 15K at my salary. No. <laughs> you're, you're a loser in that bet. Yeah. Kevin being faced with a hero call. How often is Brian Rask going to have a hand here, that he, a value hand? He can bet this much. I mean, this is a pot-sized bet on the river. Oh. Kevin makes the right fold. Yeah, Niley was talking about Jamie Staples. Ah. I don't think Jamie Staples won 15K on Poker Night in America either, but maybe. Maybe. Now, Jamie Staples does win money playing poker. I just don't think it was on Poker Night in America. We are heads up to this flop, which is also somehow still a family pot. Yeah, it's a... 7, 8, 9, 10 for Brian Rass. That is a straight draw. To our buddy Poppy. I'm just pulling your chain, obviously, Poppy. We, we love you. You've been around Pappy, since day one. Pappy. I call him Poppy. Pappy you know, Van Winkle yeah. is a very delicious type of whiskey that is difficult to get your hands on. We talked about Kevin's successes on the EPT. Let's not forget his WSOP season last year, which saw him win two bracelets, one here in Will Las Vegas. Will you stop? Are you not done reading his resume yet? Dude, look at the four pages for each player It's here. so <laughs> ridiculous. How is there still... Yeah, bourbon. Sorry. Whatever you want to call it. Pappy Van Winkle. Anyway. God, Pappy just slapping us around this morning. I know. Yeah, and of course... Also, all I know is it's expensive. Back to Brian Rast, though. I mean, you've been rattling No, I mean, we're off. talking about McPhee now. Oh, it's McPhee. Yeah. Even still. Here's something sick about uh, Kevin McPhee. McPhee McPhee won two bracelets last year? Correct. In Vegas or one's a year? One in Vegas and one in Berlin. Yeah, yeah. That means he's won EPT Berlin and WSOP Berlin yeah, main event. A, come on, European bracelets, come on. Hey. They measure them in centimeters. It's not the same. You know hey. what I mean? We're talking inches here. <laughs> come on. Just a couple inches. Um, yeah, McPhee, uh, just a stud last year, really played well. McPhee is going to lose this one at Showdown. Not a good time for me. <laughs> Blinds up to 500, 1,000. Covered. You did. To go all full circle with McPhee, the heading to the World Poker Tour. <laughs> Finished fourth WPT Montreal in November 2014. Jonathan Jaffe of the San Francisco Rush won that event. The Dolphin Trainer. The Dolphin Trainer. The, um, the guy who convinced Laura Cornelius about many things last time on camera. Solve the whole Middle East? <laughs> yeah. I wonder if they have the same conversations about us, like North America. Jeez, what a mess over what there. A mess. We got to get in there and fix things. Killing themselves with Taco Bell and traffic. started a real bourbon whiskey debate 
on Twitch. Kevin McPhee, three bets is ace deuce and gets a fold. I got one through. I wish I could show one. Alinea says, McPhee looks like a guy with a wild <laughs> sense of humor. You are correct, oh, sir. he's amazing, yeah. Chicken Parmenides. Both players miss this flop. Somehow eight high the best hand. Well, looks like they're gonna chop this a fair amount. Oh no, only 7%. Let's see what happens on the turn. There ain't gonna be no turn. Joe, one of my highlights this summer so far was you trolling uh, Max Piscatori. He was really getting upset at the fact that you were mentioning All classical <laughs> Italian dishes that do not exist in Italy. Jalapeno poppers? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you crossed the line with that one. <laughs> Kevin flops best here, pair of sixes. German Assam wanting to know where Jason Mercier is. <clears throat> he is uh he's sleeping. Getting ready for a big day two in the 10K PLO 8, I believe, championship. I thought what happened is he got to his room last night and he decided to count his money. Well, he did place bets on the Cavs, too, so oh, wow. it's just a filthy summer for Jason Mercier. Man, why can't I become close friends with these guys before they get rich? Yeah, that's, right? that's what we're struggling with. Yeah. Some, I'm always friends with them after they're rich, and then when I hit them up for a loan, it's like very transparent. Because we're already 40th on yeah. the list at that point. It's just... yeah. Pappy Van Winkle says, back to poker now. The commentators know I love them, and GPL is the real deal. Yeah, Pappy's the best. Do you remember the real deal? Evander Holyfield? No, no, no. Hold the on. real deal... Refresh my memory. ...was a... Stage show here in Las Vegas. Oh yes, we, we've t yes. The people here, our friends here that work with us, yeah, are sort of new, the newer generation of poker peeps. They don't know that there was a live. Was it a musical? I forget if it was. It a wasn't musical. a musical, but it was like uh, people from the audience would get called on stage, and like every night they would either like they would have whoever's around right. playing. So it'd be like Todd Brunson and Jen Scott Harmon, Wynn. Scott Wynn, yeah, uh, Daniel Negreanu. I. Daniel tried very hard to get me in to audition to be the host of that. Oh, yeah, that would have been awesome. At that time, it would have been, but they ended up getting Paul Rodriguez, who's like a legit oh, right. celebrity. Yeah, Basically, right. Daniel was like, look, they want a celebrity, <laughs> a.k.a. not you. The sad part is, five years later, I still don't qualify. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they could pick you out of the audience one time. That's how I make it. That could have been your big break. So Brian Rast has got a pair here. Kevin, without uh, much of anything, really, he's got a jack draw. <laughs> Glory days. <laughs> Kevin floating that flop, oh, hoping to... Uh, nope. If he was, he's That'll decided to give it up on the turn. Yeah, that's kidding. Joe, a lot of Evander Holyfield talk on chat. Do you think he's more known for being a world-class boxer, a former world champion, or the fact that Mike Tyson tried to bite, or actually did bite his ear off? That's a good question, yeah. because I'm not young. I only know him as being a world-class boxer. Right. I mean, he was, he was like the replacement for Mike Tyson. He was, um, until Tyson said, I'm chewing my way back right. in here. being asked if we have any insight on the Vanessa and Jason bet, we can tell you it's been settled. Vanessa settled before Kevin, before uh, Jason finishing second in that second event. So it was settled early. Don't want to get into the details of how much money they settled for, because I don't know. He still have lots of live bets though he that does. weren't settled. For right, some did not want to, uh, to settle. Which does make sense. If you're betting that he's gonna win three bracelets, you wouldn't think he'd do it but he'd probably, he'll probably do it tomorrow because he wants to play in the GPL, of course. So that's why he's going to get rid of that third bracelet right away and win everything. But it has been settled, and Vanessa is in Las Vegas, and we should see her hopefully soon in the GPL. Here's the more interesting question to me. Let's say Jason Mercer wins bracelet number three tomorrow. Does he tell people, offer people to let it ride on a fourth bracelet? Oh, that would be juicy. 
I want to be How there. How sick would that be? Oh, that would be really good. Double or nothing on bracelet number four. Oh, God, what a sweat. Yeah. Although it hasn't happened yet. Kevin all in with the suited king. Brian Rast will be making this call with a six. Maybe not. He's better than I am. If he doesn't make the call, that means calling is not the right thing to do. Laid it down? Yeah. No, I was wrong. Look, I was wrong. That's I'm right. not ashamed to admit it. Nope. I like it. Well, especially because I really have no choice <laughs> but to admit, <laughs> to admit it. it. So, I mean, that's why I'm doing the right thing here because there's really I mean, no other option for me. No, no, God, no. All in poker says, what are the blinds? Because this looks super standard heads up. The blinds are 600, 1200 right now, I believe. Rass has flopped pretty good here. Not the best hand at the moment, but you can see they're virtually a coin flip. Kevin folds the best hand, but certainly couldn't have liked the spot. Lines 8 and 16 now. Kevin down to 17 big blinds. Joe, the best part about that Holyfield Tyson match where the ear gets bitten off is poor referee Mills Lane. We actually got a courtroom drama show after this, a uh, live court show, freaking out going, what are you doing, Mac? What are you doing? <laughs> In the greatest Southern accent ever. Action flop here, up and down draw for Rast, heart draw for Kevin. Guess it can't be too actiony with a heart that small, but. Kevin does make his flush in the end. And he seems to think he can value bet it. Gets a fold from Brian. Kevin trying to creep his way back into this match. McPhee is currently ranked 31st in the world in the GPI World Poker Rankings, was ranked as high as number 5 to end 2015, December 31st. Number 5 in the world. Brian is now number 102 in the world, and following his mega performance at the Super High Roller Bowl last year, pushed his uh, ranking up to number 10 in the world. Fader Holtz debuting at number 1 Joe on Wednesday. <laughs> it's the first time in 22 weeks that someone other than Steve O'Dwyer was ranked number 1 in the world. Debuting at number one, it's Justin Bieber with Love Yourself it's and Fedor Holtz. And Fedor Holtz. What do we got here? Seven, eight, Jack, ten, queen. Kevin drawn pretty thin. Up against the pocket, GX of Brian Rast. And Kevin does not see a river card. Blinds out 1,000, 2,000. 13 big blinds for McFizzle. It's a walk there. I would imagine we're going to hear the <laughs> very soon. In fact, it's going to be entirely possible that with this king high and 13 big blinds. Nope. 
Did not go in before the flop. Good flop for Kevin, though. Not a great one, but certainly one that he's probably not going to be afraid to get it in with. Brian does have some. Yep. Some outs here. Any bets? Hmm. Kevin just calls. King on the turn. No more calling. Maybe, I don't know. I mean, you know what? I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop with the whole thing because I don't know what these guys are going to do. I'm an idiot. Top parent at draw. It's just a great feeling. Yeah. It's just a nice be like, you know what? I probably have the best hand. If not, I'm going to get the best hand. <laughs> we'll get there. Ryan with just 10 high. I think he's got to take Kevin's bet pretty seriously. Like, I don't think you can expect Kevin to fold once he bets 4,400 here. Um, Brian's draw. What's he got, a double gutter? Yeah. Wow, okay. He's happy to get it in. Alrighty then. Kevin's got the best hand for now. Yeah. Two pair would be bad for him. A nine would be bad for him. A jack is not bad for him. Can't bet fold that turn. A jack no. is just fine. Kevin doubles up. He now is the chip lead, although these two are both pretty short stacked at this point. Block Dodger says, in my opinion, the set makes uh, the show look like a Friday afternoon Channel 4 game show. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. That's what we're going for. <laughs> we'll take it. Oh boy, here we go. Flush draw for Kevin, top pair for Brian. Sparks could fly here. Yeah, we're going to see what people don't understand is more people watch afternoon game shows than watch poker. Yeah. Uh, and so if we can tap into that, that's exactly what we're going for. Mainstream television, guys. To be Kevin's fair, all in. Brian can, shan't be folding this time. If we can get your grandma to watch, that's great. Kevin for me. Nice hand. Nice hand. Six, seven, eight, nine. Kevin does not get there. It's so close to just ripping it pre. <laughs> so Brian doubles up. That's going to leave Kevin with very few chips. Brian completely stoic there. Kevin trying to get some info. But I'm not uh, sure that Brian even knows he won the hand. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I probably call. Oh, okay. He did tell. I, I didn't even. Yeah, I don't think I fooled Kington suited for like less than tw like 20 bigs or less. Probably not. I don't think much changing on the turn to make my hand more attractive so all in poker says if kevin wins this it all comes down to the a6 off fold i guess you can say the same thing if brian wins and i mean yeah. kevin now folding down to just a couple of beebs it's weird it doesn't exactly tell you how many chips the other person has you have to kind of like try to figure it out yeah just in the hand. 100 minus or whatever kevin can almost yeah, he's gonna be drawing down on a lot of turns here that. The three is right, absolutely one of them. Yeah, good game. Good game. Next. Brian wins this one. Sweet. Yeah, that's actually the I think the number one thing they should they need. I mean they dealer in big blind, but they should definitely have just a little thing that says the other person's chips during that. Cut! Cut! Go go to no. something else! Don't we don't want it to sit. Isn't we'll, it? We'll listen to you after the. No. Isn't Look, it sort we, of weird? They, it's, a, it's a weird statement because I've heard it a few times. And to be honest, Joe, we could have put that in the software at first, but we thought, you know, poker players can minus 100 from your stack. So, hey, we will. It's just weird. We will add that, yeah. Because what it is, I think because it's a weird blend of right. live and online. Yeah. So, an, uh, when you're playing online, you right. always know what the other person's stack yeah. is. When you're playing live, you can at least look over and look at their chips. And I think. Yeah. Both of those things are sort of missing. Yesterday, when I was when I played in the cube yesterday, Joe, when I got down there and played in the cube, I actually thought the same thing because my I didn't even occur to me to be perfectly honest, Eric, that I could just subtract my number from a yeah. hundred and get what my other player, person stack was. Yeah, I got you. you know, I mean, Mark Andre asked me a few times. I don't know he how did. much do you have. Maybe he was trying to get a read. No, he didn't. There's just so much. No, you can't. You can't read this. <laughs> you can't read. Like if I don't know what hand I have, right? If I think I have a straight. But really, I've got a pair. Joe, uh, one thing I wanted to mention, though, yeah. is that uh, we did sign you to a one-hour contract. 
Okay. And p- players are paid to play in the league. The only issue is that uh, our uh, our CEO Alex Dreyfus wasn't here. He didn't validate that contract, so you're not getting paid for that. No, nah, so. I mean honestly, I wasn't yeah. expecting it. So you just took okay, money away from okay, me. I didn't know okay. I was getting in the first place. Also, since Laura subbed in for you, she's getting that money from you too. So you really oh, lost so I just a had a day off money. yesterday. Basically, Correct. is what you're telling me. Good for me. you. Fantastic. You wonderful great. news. <laughs> <laughs> Not as wonderful as the news for the Berlin Bears, who win three points right out of the gate here, away from uh, the New York Rounders and Kevin McPhee. Um, we saw Brian Rass make uh, what most of our audience felt like was a fairly tight fold yeah. uh, with the A6 off there. But it paid off. It, it happened to work out for him. I'm a person that likes to play results, so uh, because Brian won, I would like to say that that was the exact reason why he won it. <laughs> That's right. Um, you know, this match kind of went the way they predicted it. They said that, uh, you know, Kevin was like, you know, hopefully I'll just hang in there until the blinds get high and then I'll get right. lucky. Kevin did not get lucky. He uh, bricked, uh, obviously, that one hand uh, where he had the diamond yeah. draw. That did not work out well for him. Uh, I wonder if we are going to see them try to play a little bit bigger pots sooner in the next game yeah we'll have to see what happens there i think both will probably adjust their strategies but it was a fine match uh, one that i can't wait to to watch again because uh, two world-class players uh, making all the good moves two world-class players making all the good moves right now they're on the floor with laura cornelius thanks joe congratulations to the berlin bears and brian rast there picking up the first three points of the match how did you find it uh, it was it was cool. The software is actually pretty easy to use. It's it's kind of fun. I I can see, especially maybe in the future, if there's people like around the cube and and cheering and yeah, it, it could be. It, it's got a cool. It's a cool beginning. Yeah. Will you get a pat on the back from uh, Mr. Gruesome now? Oh, I certainly hope so. <laughs> maybe even Everyone a little more. Philip, come on, come on, buddy. <laughs> we don't win very many matches. Someone just actually won one. You know, hook me up. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, you didn't win that one, but there still is the chance to take it down if you win the next two games. Yeah, I mean, my strategy was basically just to play snug and let the blinds get big. I tried one zero equity bluff that just I must have run into something pretty good. And then I think the 9 7 seed kind of plays itself. Like, uh, if he doesn't have a king or a six, I'm probably going to win the pot a bunch. And there's not too many scare cards to come on that board. So it seems like just shipping it and realizing my equity with the flush draw is the thing to do. But I didn't get there, so. There's still time. Yep. And Joe said, are we going to see you play some bigger pots earlier on in this next one? Yeah, we'll just see how it goes. I don't know. Wait, I'd you sure you don't want to tell me right now? Why don't you tell, <laughs> tell me the strategy before we play the match? Yeah. I feel like that's a, that good, was... that's a good move. It would be fun to play some bigger pots. Uh, I didn't really have any hands to do that before. But so. do you plan on playing bigger pots? Yeah, oh, let's wait. play some. Let's get 100,000 yeah. chips in the middle. <laughs> wink, wink, wink. Let's, okay. Yeah, but was that a bluff? Uh-huh. Which? That could have been a bluff. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, levels. Just levels. don't know this, do you? This poker game. Right. These guys are ready to get back into the cube for game two. Will the Berlin Bears take down the match or are those New York Rounders going to steal one back? Back to you guys after this quick break. Can't get enough of the GPL? Head over to globalpokerleague.com for the most complete and up-to-date standings, schedule, stats, and information on your favorite team, as well as full-length match replays, highlights, and epic hands from all of our matches, and much, much more. So we saw Brian Rass say that he was hoping to get uh, not only a pat on the back, but maybe something more from Phil Gruesome. What do we think that could be? Do you think that Phil is actually rewarding players on his team with potential sexual favors? Do we have a GPL scandal on our hands? I mean, if he does, the team's only won four games this year. That so can it's explain not, it. It's maybe not been that much, that, right? No, I'm saying maybe that's why they're all terrified to win. To win. Yeah. He's like, come on, everyone. I will have you over to my house. We will have a good time if you win your matches. Yeah, his beautiful uh, island in Malta, or his house on the island of Malta, is uh, 
you know, is where Philip is now, just waiting for the the team to show up. I guess. <laughs> yeah, that's, that probably explains why the team's only won four times. Yeah, it's like, look, I'm just, uh, I, 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 all I want is, is a pat on the that's back. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, I, I kind of led Laura down the uh, the primrose path a little bit there when she said, "Are you going to play some bigger pots?" It's like right. a, it's kind of like a pitfall question. Like we speculate about that. It's. Kevin's answer is really the only answer he can yeah, give, a, which is like, we'll see what happens. Because it's it's based on, look, if he's getting three deuce and five four, my guess is he's probably not going to play bigger pot. No, no, he's, he's probably good enough to not to do that. Um, you know, it's a typical sports question and answer that uh, we hear from, uh, you know, did you think uh, you gave it all on the court last right. night? Yeah, says, they what, probably what did. You, so. What are you going to ask? Yeah. Are you going to try harder? Do you want to win this match? Are you going to win this match? Are you going to get luckier? These are all things that we got to ask. We got to put yeah. it out there because, you know, who wants to hear about 7-4 merge ranging? I bet you if you ask Bryn Kenny that question, he'll be brutally honest about it. Wouldn't even care if his opponent knows. I mean, I've definitely had players go just look at me and go, that's a terrible question. <laughs> and I'm not going to answer it. Who, it. Roland DeWolf did that to me. Oh, no. Time. Yeah. Triple uh, crown winner? That'll make you feel bad. Yeah. Well, oh, it man. wasn't a triple crown winner yet, so I don't know where he got oh, off. Yeah, yeah. Uh, except for the fact that it was hilarious and everyone laughed at me for a long time. I actually heard Daniels one time. Um, this is amazing. My first time uh, on the EPT, I uh, went to go rail Daniel in Vienna, and we were walking out of the building together, and uh, someone grabbed him for an interview. He's like, yeah, sure, 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 no problem, no problem. Um, and then I just walked away, and then about a minute later, I hear him go, hey, Stapes, yeah, this guy's been talking to me for a minute and a half, hasn't asked me a question yet. <laughs> And I'm just like, oh, God, this guy must feel terrible. And yeah. that's and Daniel's like, cool, man. And that went out like that, like the interview. Oh, wow. With Daniel moaning about the fact that the guy hadn't asked the question. We've all been there. We've yeah. all done it. We've all dropped the ball occasionally. At the moment, we do have our players ready to go with game two here. Just a quick reminder, blinds are 50,000 chips each. Those, excuse me, blinds? Yeah. Starting stacks are 50,000 chips each. The blinds are two and 400. They go up every four minutes. Uh, we saw things get up to eight and 16 last time. Will they go further this time? Time to get down to poker to the power of three in the cube. We're on. Let's go. Joe, if you thought the blinds were 50,000, that probably explains why you got destroyed. By yeah, you know what? Hey, we, to serve. Yeah, we may uh, play bigger pots early. Oh. Yeah. Why are you taking your jacket off? <laughs> <laughs> we may play some bigger pots early. Day two for Brian Rast does start very soon, so. This is hilarious. I accept full responsibility for this. <laughs> One bet, two bet, three bet. Four. This is so hilarious. Please, I really want this to go to be just one hand. This is so funny that we're goofing around about. Oh, okay, so Kevin flatted. Flatted the four bet, and it's a nine high flop. This is not getting any better for him. Spammy says, this is going 2-0. Mad Rookie says, game two about to last one hand. Reaper Stack says, slow roll. T22 says, one hand game. Mad Rookie says, I call rigged. Kevin Betts and a call from Brian. So a king on the turn. Bit of a scare card for tens. Wonderful card for aces. 25,000 chips in this pot already. Pappy Van Winkle says, have a nice day. Yeah, we've seen a, a cheery, smiley Kevin McPhee in the cube so far, but this could uh, this could change the mood here. Pentamagic says, one hand game, but tens will win with a 10 on the river. Hmm. I mean, Kevin's bet a third of his remaining stack. Brian, I think, is going to raise here. Oh. Brian's all in. I guess we're holding the first hand. Oh, he's going to call. Wow. I, I like. I want this match to last the hand, but I don't want him to do it. Did he call? He did Kevin call. did call. He's gonna wow. see. He's up against aces. So match two did absolutely okay. last one hand. Well, I guess we were right. We were gonna play. <laughs> I really don't know what I we're gonna talk about. Four X. I was like, oh, this is good. Happy days. For all this time in between matches, maybe we can start the next one, the next game, pretty quickly. We'll have to do it quickly. No, I think I made it a thousand. I just. 
I had just got my jacket off. Yeah, I told you Eric not to take I, it off. Eric and I get undressed <laughs> when we're not on camera because it's so freaking hot yeah. back here. And uh, wow, so y- you're welcome. Yeah, good you're, job. You're welcome, guys. Laura Cornelius with the hard-hitting investigative questions, and she knew what was about to happen. Obviously. I feel like so I job. secreted that. Like, why yeah. wasn't I thinking about like Kate Upton and uh, winning the lottery? Oh yeah. When I just was instead thinking about playing big pots early. Why? Why can I never yeah. use my powers for personal gain? Kate Upton, yeah, yeah. Right. I can't even talk when I. Yeah, think just get the... gibberish just thinking about her. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, one hand there. I don't. I don't really know what to say about it. Not a ton of analysis to do there. Had it gone in pre-flop, fine. Going where it went seems fine to me. Yeah. What are you gonna do? Two monsters dealt heads up. Yeah, it's heads up. So there's nothing you can do about that. Uh, I guess the good news for the Berlin Bears, they do win their fifth match of the year. So that special favor is gonna come from yeah, Philip so pa- quicker than we thought. The, the pat on the back has just been upgraded to a kiss on the mouth. <laughs> That's right. And, you know, the good news for them, uh, Joe, they are now 12 points out of a playoff spot. They started today uh, 18 points away. So could be in the single digits by the end of this match, or the Rounders could uh, pick up some more points. We've talked about how the Sao Paulo Mets have been the team to beat so far in the Cube. That That is really bad news for the New York Rounders, whom seem to be destined to finish fourth or actually you know, fall down in the standings. They should not pick up any points here. Well, I'm just uh, really glad that Kevin, you know, was such a good team player today. He's come in and taken this on the chin right. for his team, <laughs> yeah. not only being here when no one else could be, but, uh, you know, getting cold decked right in the face. Let's find out how Kevin and Brian are feeling about it, because right now they're down on the floor with the corn dog. Thank you so much. Well, we called it with the big pots, didn't we? One hand, that one. Yes, indeed. <laughs> you guys you guys called it by slipping the cold deck right in there. I yeah. mean, you guys are going to play big pots, right? Boom, aces versus tens on the first hand. It's, yeah. you know, I, I was a lucky recipient of the aces, so no complaints for the Berlin Bears. Yeah, six points yeah. now, which uh, is pretty good going considering the history of the Berlin Bears in yeah, recent events. Yeah, we've sucked. So <laughs> yeah. I, I'm just going to go to our uh, WhatsApp chat and be like, what's up, guys? Boom, and just like walk away. I'll be a little gif of some guy doing that, or you know. And luckily for you, your manager Bryn Kenny is probably on a private jet in yeah. San Francisco or something, so yeah, he won't something know. Like, he won't even know. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Yeah, I think I just screwed it up a little bit. I thought he forex that hand. Apparently, he just made it one thousand, so I just made like a gigantic re-raise for no reason, and Cause we told ended you up to make ended up stacking off. And there's a lot of draws and stuff you could have, but. Uh, Certainly changes the, the dynamics of the hand, thinking he 4 x rather than just like made it 1,000. So, yeah, that'll happen, I guess. Thinking back to the previous plays, is anything going to be done differently in this third and final game of the match? Mm, I don't know. We're probably going to make it go pretty fast, I think. <laughs> well, there is an England game on. Big so. pots. <laughs> Got to get to the England game. Yeah. You know how it is. <laughs> yeah. All, right. All right. These guys are about to play game three in the cube. Yeah. Though the Berlin Bears have already won the match, but can the New York Rounders take the last three points available? Can't get enough of the GPL? Head over to globalpokerleague.com for the most complete and up-to-date standings, schedule, stats, and information on your favorite team, as well as full-length match replays, highlights, and epic hands from all of our matches, and much, much more. I think, um, who was it here on Twitch that said it best? Mad Rookie says, going to be hard to make a highlight video of, of that particular game. Well, that being said, or that's easy, a pretty really. big highlight. It's yeah, actually kind a... of an easy video. It's going to yeah. make it uh, hard to be like a, a robust highlight video. But the editor's going to be like, oh, done. Got it. Joe, uh, you know, let's not forget that Jason Mercier was scheduled to be in the cube. Mm-hmm. Do you think that the 10s 
just magically win that hand since you're Jason Mercer and you're you winning You know, I was everything. wondering about that. I don't know how the RNG works for your particular <laughs> software, so I don't know if those cards were coming out no matter what. I don't know if it's based on... Yeah, I, I can confirm the software really doesn't care which player wins, so I can confirm no, that. No, I don't it's, mean it's like not that. A, it's, not a fan. <laughs> it's not a fan of Brian Rast or you know, No, Kevin not like that, but you know, ah. like some software, it's like depending on when you click, like the deck is constantly ah, shuffling, yes. so like when you click does have something to do with it. All right, now, okay. Or if like you had Jason Mercier stepped in there, would all of the hands be dealt the same way? Would Or, or is it just because Jason Mercier is a magician and boop? No, not a cheating possible. magician like a okay. I don't I mean I don't know. I, I just have a feeling that Jason's saves his magic for <laughs> massive <laughs> buy in bracelet events. So you're saying GPL San Diego is where he's gonna turn it on. It's yeah, I mean is that where the no it's Wembley, I guess, really, when the real money's on the line. Oh, I was so. talking like pride on the line, and that's San Diego. I feel like that when it comes to professional poker players, pride means something, but there has to be a price tag. It's we'll like see. pride, the pride's tag. There's know, t tell that to Kevin McHugh's down 2 0. I bet you he wants to win this last game. Of course he does. Of course he does. But maybe not enough to like use any and all of his magical powers. <laughs> That's all I'm <laughs> saying. Like, maybe he wants to save that for, you know, something like a. A 10K, something yeah. like that. But yes, Kevin McPhee is in danger of being swept right now. He seems to be in pretty good spirits about it. Obviously, you can't get too upset over uh, wrong, over yeah. that last hand there. He says that he didn't notice that uh, the initial raise from Brian wasn't, or maybe it was the, the four bet from Brian, wasn't yeah. as big as he, he thought it was. Um, I don't know if the hand plays out that much differently no, no. otherwise. I mean, maybe when the king hits the turn, Kevin doesn't feel so pot committed if he hadn't invested so much preflop. Yeah, possibly. Um, so maybe he does get away from the tens there. But, hey, man, it couldn't have worked out any better for us. The the the, uh, the soothsayers were like, <laughs> how about you play some bigger pots? And they're like, how about we play the biggest pot imaginable? Yep. 50K piled in on top of 50K, 100K to the winner. So the Berlin Bears right now are uh, very close to sweeping the New York Rounders. Just yeah. one more game to go. So far, six points to nil. And uh, before we get into the queue, one last time for today, both players start with 50,000 in chips. The blinds begin at two and 400. They go up every four minutes. Each player has a 20-minute time bank. Didn't crack that last time. Not for this one. No, not needed. So we'll see how far we get into that 20-minute time back as we get down to the cube. Oh, there's the music. Now I'm ready to play. I wasn't ready until the music came on. Dun-dun. He's not kidding. <clears throat> Our clock's reset here? Uh, yeah. I, like I, the clock is running. I have 20 minutes. I mean, like, the this clock. Oh. Yeah. It is running. Look like it. Kevin forgot Maybe that he used up that 30 seconds last match to to lose unfortunately for him. It's not going. Yeah, I can I can see what I did now. When you raised, I can just see on the left side it says raise 1600, but that's an action that I can do. Oh yeah. So it's ah. not telling you what you were at, like yeah. Yeah. Clearly I just screwed that up beyond all Yeah, cuz 1600 would be the the minimum amount. Yeah. So yeah. It's like Yeah, no. I yeah, I made it a thousand. Yeah. That's what I and I just punted it in. <laughs> well, I mean, had you made a normal three bet size, like we might have just got it all in preflop, and then the random number generator might have help, helped you. <laughs> Eighteen percent of the time, maybe it would have fold. There's no way McPhee gets away from that hand in the first, uh, right. the first hand, right, Joe? More hands than last night. I mean, I'm gonna say that just so yeah. we can put it to bed. <laughs> 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 Moving on. Join us tomorrow. That means maybe it just means we're never gonna see what the. Let's we'll just see if the blinds go up in like a, a minute, a couple minutes, and then we'll see whether or not we need to complain. Because I would rather. I mean, be nice to have the clock, or have, have the blinds board. go up. I don't have a board. Uh oh. Not sure what the issue is. A at real this point. poker player doesn't need a board. Um, Did you call? Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, uh... Yeah, there seems to be a technical issue here where Kevin has the action on him, yet does not know what the board is. Oh. Oh. By the way, the, uh, just, uh, the... I don't know whether or not the time's actually running on the clock, but... Or... What happened? Uh, I, well, I checked to you, yeah, but I don't have a We've just confirmed that the board yeah, is not being see seen, so I assume we will, uh... And, um... Have to the stop this match as time. we are waiting for instruction from so, our team. Yeah, but obviously, there's an issue here as Kevin cannot see the cards. And I'm no poker expert, Joe, but you've got to see that. I don't know. So we're looks like we playing a new hand. We fired things up and just said, ah, forget about that hand. Time for another one. 
and we do appreciate you guys, by the way, the audience having some patience with us, and especially the players who are down there. Now, look, they don't have a lot invested in this season other than their time yeah. and their effort. Um, so, problems on this one. Uh, looks like things are still goofy down there. To play poker. Kevin hey, is correct. You do need to flop. You can get somebody. What I love is that Seriously, this proves that they can't see anything because like the they're talking anyway. All right, let's come to us. And once again, yeah, I've had to I mean, prematurely. I feel, like, I feel like we should just re redo this match. Put my right. jacket on. We have like, basically, we have like the same amount of chips right now. Bring and, it on. Uh, Bring it on back to. We'll do it. Oh. And. <laughs> that, yeah. that was. Fun. Bring it on back hey. to Uncle Daddy here. Uncle Daddy's going to ride you through the storm. We're going to hang tight here. We're going to chat, maybe tell some anecdotes yeah. while we figure out what we're going to do there. Probably just going to reboot the match. How long does it take to reboot very, the very GPL short. server? Yeah, very short. Right? And we're back. Seconds and we're back. Do you want to go through the six pages of resumes that I have for both of these players? Nah. No, no, we don't want to do nah. that. We don't want to do that. I'm trying to think about... I've already told my Brian Rass story. It's a great story. I got a lot of Kevin McPhee stories, but some Talk of them... Talk about the road trip. Can we mention mm. who else was on that trip or no? No, cannot. Yeah. Uh, no, we can. We can talk about it. Hardigan was driving that trip, actually. Wow. How is that not a reality show? Doing a road trip with James Hardigan is really something. This is actually amazing. So we do the road trip every year. This year on the, on the way back from Deauville, it was me and James and uh, Matt Broughton. All right. Who also does the commentary team, yeah, on the, the EPT. Team. And James somehow pulled into the wrong lane for the tunnel, for the tunnel. Oh, God. And we ended up in, like, the tractor trailer <laughs> section of the tunnel. And James I will, James is right, like, 99.9% right. of the time. And he is yeah, really gotcha. good at it. And so when he's wrong, you just have to savor great. those moments. You just have to just stick it in his face. And luckily, he Did was you at trapped. some point say, hey, I don't think you're in the right lane? And he said, no, Joe. I'm in the right lane, because that would be even sweeter. It was more one of these things, because I was in the back, and, right. and Brown was in the front. It's more one of these things where we're like, bup, 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 right. bup, bup, and he's like, <laughs> the other direction. <laughs> so, yeah. so And plus, then he's trapped in a car with us right. for like the next <laughs> it's gonna be couple rough. of hours. Like, he just can't get away from knowing he was wrong. So, yeah, that was a, that was a different trip that Kevin McPhee uh, wasn't on. So, Eric Danis. Hmm. So, we're just going to reboot this match, start it from yeah. scratch. Yeah, let's just start it off, and of course... Uh, Rasty and uh, McPhee saying, uh, let's uh, just start it over again since it was a little messy on that one as the uh, as a team, uh, the technical team are working through it right now. We can say that the, the worst news to the, of the day goes to the Rome Emperors as they are now eight points behind Berlin. So really, really in trouble here. 20 points behind the uh, uh, playoff spot. And as we mentioned, Joe, it's not just behind the playoffs. It's you need to pass teams that are in front of you. So that's really, really a tough situation right now for the Rome Emperors who do seem to be one of the teams in very much in big trouble. Still a lot of points uh, available on the board, but they're going to need a lot of help in order to uh, to make the playoffs in order to make it to San Diego. Yo, know, I, I think the Rome team may be in trouble because Max Pescatore hasn't been feeding them enough authentic Italian food. Can we talk about a few of these yes. dishes? Pizza, Pizza Hut. Pizza Hut? Um, chicken parm. Mm. Mozzarella dippers. Do, do you think Max would be even more insulted to know that I eat tofu parm since I'm don't eat meat. Like, is Tofu that even a parm more is probably slap really on? good, actually. It's very good. It's very yeah, good. Yeah, I don't it's the think same I would delicious have to stuff. Have meat parm. And, yeah, all right, all right. But I wonder, as an Italian, if he just slaps me around, because I think the part, like the you know, the parm part, is probably the part that upsets him <laughs> to begin with. <laughs> right. The cheese on top of the sauce on top of the chicken yeah, is on probably top of the bread. Slaps and, him. Yeah. Basically, a chicken finger with uh, with cheese melted on top of it. Hey guys, I feel like we've talked about melted cheese long enough. We could do it more, or we could get down to the cube. You guys want to get down to the cube for game three? Okay, let's get, yes. let's get down to the cube. Pappy's saying yes. It'll be like multiple. It's like eight. Do you hear the music? Sounds like we're going now. Eight, and then people will, will just be have a ring of people standing. Playing. Okay, best of luck to you, sir. I think game is on. Aww. Game on. Dun, dun. We three saying the beard is spot on. I agree. Rasty's beard and McPhee's beard is spot on. Oh, he's talking about Joe. Ah. Yes, now I see. Beards. Now I see. Word for they grow on you. <laughs> I do find McPhee to be a better player when he sees a flop. That's when he's really good, when he can actually see cards on the board. Solid player. Oh. <laughs> Feudal Habit says, to be honest, I'm 50% here for the commentators. Oh, God. That was, that was, well, the other 50% of them hates us. So it's a, <laughs> a zero-sum game. We got it. 
So both players flop a pair, neither with top pair. Brian's better for now. Kevin folds correctly. Six, seven, get through. Stay tuned for the end of this match where you'll see what Joe and I are wearing, and we are going out after. I don't know how to get the angle right, though, so yeah, they can see our shorts. Maybe we go with Laura at some point. Can we sit on that? Oh, think that I would, would hold us? I don't know. We didn't have that enough money for that desk. That would be hilarious if we jumped up on there and it broke on camera. <laughs> yes. It would be worth it. Yeah, I think, uh, it, yeah. It would go viral. <laughs> It'd be the best press the GPL has had. Since Aaron Paul. Uh, better than Aaron Paul. Yeah. Our thanks to Aaron Paul, who was on the Stephen Colbert show. Didn't talk about us. Thanks, bud. But he also didn't talk about that movie he was in with The Rock because he didn't know he was in it, right? Remember that? That's yeah, that was a little weird. Yeah. To be fair, he's on the posters, but nowhere to be found in the trailer, so. Can oh, I, I heard what... I heard what... I can't spoil it, but oh, okay. someone told me what he does in the movie. Oh, can I am? Um, can it's we still of, call? It's a, it's a bit of a callback to an old character. I see. So from Hulu's The Path. Of That's course. right. Yeah, it's a callback to his BoJack Horseman <laughs> Todd character. <laughs> can we still call him The Rock, or is he Dwayne The Rock Johnson now? I think I he's think, changed again. I think he's all right with The Rock. Yeah. I don't know. Let me text him. Yeah, I would call him Sir to be very honest. That's a cool dude. So Kevin is out kicked here. Give Kevin credit for even well, thinking about this call. Yeah, he gave it some thought. He's wrong. You do got me. You do but, got me. I mean, I would have insta-called. Yeah. You uh, you know baseball a little bit, right? I am. It's probably my second or third favorite sport. I'm okay. a big stats geek, so of course baseball. Oh, baseball's got stats up yeah. the yin yang. Yeah. So, I kind of play poker the way some. When you're a really bad baseball player, you decide whether you're going to swing at the next pitch or not, right? Right. Like you're just like, okay, That's I'm it. just going for it because you're not good enough in the moment to decide. That's kind of how I am with a hand like Kevin's. Right I see. There. What you mean. I'm just like, you know what? I'm just calling this down, no matter Whatever. what. Happens. Unless the board comes really terrible, you know. Yep. So if the ball's completely in the dirt when you decide to swing, chances are you can yeah. stay away from that one. So unless the board comes really terrible, uh oh, hand number seven. That's the way I feel about Ace Jack. You're just like, I'm just going to yeah. close my eyes and white knuckle it and just whatever happens, happens. I mean, Ace King, that's the ultimate hand for that. You're like, you know what? I'm just never folding this. It's a sweet sense of serenity. No way Brian gets away from this. Does he flat in position or does he put it in a fourth bet? He did flat. Ace high Ooh. flop. I do not see how we do not get a major amount of chips into the middle here. Now, granted, they are really deep still. And Brian started this hand with a slight lead, so only Kevin is at risk, although he is ahead by a significant margin. So that's, uh, doesn't really change anything between these two, but it may make Brian like his hand a little bit more. Anything he's losing to before, though, he was still losing to. And you know, a few things that he wasn't losing to before, he's losing to now. And when Brian makes this call, we're going to have 30,000 chips in the middle. The river is a king. So Brian's chopping with ace-queen now. Beating a lot of other aces. I guess he's chopping with a, with a lot of things now. And this is uh, putting Brian in a terrible spot because he is chopping with so many hands. Man. Man, oh man, he is losing to so few aces. Brian makes the wow. call. Kevin is going to double up. Oh, there we go. The river card for me. 
I bet you if Brian was down in this match, or it was 1-1, sorry, he would have taken longer to decide here. I really do think being up 2-0 makes a big I mean, difference in their You know, play. I was only looking at that hand from one perspective, which is like, oh, okay, like an ace-queen's no longer beating me. Forgetting right. the perspective that, oh, all the aces I was beating before right. are now chopping with me. It's true. And uh, I think that he just that you just have to make that call because Kevin's going to have, you know, an yeah. ace, it's a hand that's beating you so infrequently. Yeah. No, I don't doubt the call. I'm just saying that I think, oh, God. Ace, ace, all right. Other all right. People to see, places to be. That was... All right. Well, it looks like Brian might agree with you, Eric, that uh, he maybe didn't put his... <laughs> yeah, me, me and Brian basically play the same exact way. I want to go home and sleep. <laughs> um, how much do I have? If you want to go home and sleep, put more chips in the middle in this hand. Brian's made it 1240. Uh, King's not a good card. He's not a good card. I aren't even. Oh, he means on the river. He's still thinking about that yeah, last time. He's still bothered. I was like, did he have a flop ready? We are all in pre flop. And That's... Kevin's about as big a favorite as you can be pre flop. That's. 7, 8, 9. Some hope for oh, Brian. Yeah. 7, 8, 9, 10. But there are spades out there as well. And yeah. third 8 does not provide. Go. The card Brian Rass was looking for. So Kevin McPhee wins the final game. Oh. That's all I needed. I just needed the ace-king and aces to help me get through the match. It was very kind of them to rig it well, for me. We, we, <laughs> we both had I mean, the only one that was kind of like... A that is it. I think that's the shortest overall match we've seen yeah. so far. I think the first match went how many hands do yeah, you have? 46. 46 hands for the first game. And then 10 total for the next two. One. <laughs> right, one. One hand for game two. And nine. Nine yeah. for game three for the shortest number of overall hands I think we've seen so far yeah. since the summer series has started. Uh, Kevin McPhee did manage to avoid the clean sweep, uh, winning three points there from the Berlin Bears. Yeah, and gaining a few points back from the, the Mets. They're now 10 points behind the Mets, uh, 16 points ahead of the Las Vegas Moneymakers. So we always talk about that third match. You know, if you're down 2 0, you want to win, you know, to, for pride's sake, but it's also those three points do become valuable later down the line. So a big three points there for the Rounders. Big three points for the Rounders and an even bigger six points for the Berlin Bears. Uh, who are managing? They're they're still solidifying their playoff spot, right? With the yeah, they're twelve points back of a playoff spot. But I mean, it is much better. The news is much better than being eighteen down as the day started. So yeah, I think good news, baby steps for for that team. And uh, I think those nine, nine nine points would have been crucial, but six points is still better than zero or three. I'm a math guy. And Brian Rast, lucky that now he only has to have the mouth kiss. That's right. From Phil Grusso. Yeah, it could have been way you know, better. The pat way on the back. Or... And if you, if you have a clean sweep, I don't even want to know. No. I don't even know if we can say it. He doesn't want to know. On the air, to be perfectly honest. Well, both these guys seemed a little tired today, so it seems only fitting that they managed to get things done relatively <laughs> right. quickly today. But they were fantastic once in a cube. They were great. It was one Absolutely. Of my Good guys. But to, I think Brian's very excited to get home and maybe get a, get a little a little kip in, yeah. as they say, before he has to restart at 2 o'clock. So let's not waste any more time. We are going to get uh, down to Laura Cornelius, Brian Rast, and Kev McPhee for the post game right now. Thanks, Joe. Congratulations there to the New York Rounders taking three points from that match, but obviously the Berlin Bears winning it overall two games to one. Congratulations, though, taking three points uh, and one of the fastest matches that we've ever seen here in the GPL. <laughs> I'm sure it's quite refreshing for you guys. Um, yeah, I just, I mean, I got good hands and he got good hands, so that'll yeah. happen sometimes. You weren't happy with that call you made, though? Yeah, I, I, I think I, I could definitely have thought about folding ace jack. On, on the river, but eh, I slipped yeah. in the call and it's a you know, bad thing. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. But yeah, no, I mean, Kevin played good. I, I think, I mean, that hand was kind of a cooler. I, I think on most rivers I'm, I'm calling. I think really only the king, because I mean, some of like a few semi bluffs get like Queen Jack gets there. And it's also like, I think a tougher card to bluff unless he's like three betting. I don't know. Whatever. I'm not going to get into the analysis of it. The call was suspect, but that said, uh, I thought Kevin played well, and it was a fun match. It was cool to play in the cube for the first time. 
Very good. Yeah. Good to know. And yep. your second time, was it cooler the second time? Not no, really. It was cooler because it was faster. So the, yeah, the longer true. you're in there, the more you're sweating. So <laughs> yeah. uh, just happy that the deck was cold and the cube was hot so we could get out of there. Damn. Yeah. And you guys are going to play at the WSOP today? Yep. yep. Yeah. What events are you in? I'm in day two of the 10K Omaha 8 or better. I have about double starting, which is a little below average, but uh, gonna give it a gonna give it a go. Can you give it a whirl? I'm in the the summer solstice 1500, so okay. I'm gonna late rage that. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, and best of luck in the events that you are playing today. Berlin Bears obviously taking this one down though, two games to one. Back to you. Thank you so much. Sweet. What lovely, nice, nice boys moment. they are. We're glad we got them out of there in time to go play their events. Maybe Brian can get a little nap in. Eric, before we get out of here, should we do a little walk-by? I'm going to do a little walk-by the camera so everyone can see how you and I are dressed. I'm going to go first. Okay. You need to stay here and man the ship. Okay, yeah. So here it is, folks. We have, uh, we have a great entertainment for you today. As you can see, Joe Stapleton. So sporting the pink and blue. The blue is not coming out right, but that's fine. Um, yeah, there it is. And not to be outdone, uh, Joe and I actually live in the same uh, room, and I said, I also want to wear pink and blue, so yeah, here yeah, we go. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, here we go. Totally, totally planned, everybody. And we've got Eric in his blue and pink. I believe that's called salmon. I believe that's a salmon color. Anyway, guys, great match today. Let's take a look at the league standings. We'll start with whatever you guys feel. Go ahead, show me some league standings. We can just improv off of it. Hey, it's the America's Conference. See, I just picked up on that. Hold on, let me get my script. Montreal Nationals still in first place, 121 points. The Sunset, the Mets, the Mets have been the story so far during this summer series. Joe, picking up, uh, what day is it now? A, a ton of points, a ton of points. Uh, eight of nine Meet games the Mets. won. Meet the Mets. That's Do you right. know that song? Meet the Mets, of course. The Metropolitans, of course. Yeah. It's a, yeah. You'll be I'm a great tie-in. Meet the Mets, M-E-A-T, and then we all go to Brazilian barbecue. Oh, Hello. we do like that Brazilian barbecue. The anyway. Mets, yeah, they're doing great. But yeah, as you see, the Rounders are now 10 points out of a playoff spot. Better than they started, but they're really probably disappointed with uh, only picking up three points since Kevin mcphee has been playing so well inside the cube. The Moneymakers are there, but the Rush are right behind them, and they get uh, in the cube in a few days facing Paris, and that'll be the match where you know Chris Moneymaker's team could be in, you know, in, in the last place. Just we got confirmation. I was just uh, speaking with uh, Jonathan Duhamel. He will be in the cube on Friday, so we'll Do. see the world champ before he goes back home to deliver his baby. I don't think he's the one delivering, though. I hope not. Oh, uh, my baby, I got this, I got fluid on my bracelet. Sorry, that just seems wow, like a Wow, it's offensive to us French Canadians, but hey, that's fine. Is it? I'm kidding. No, it's okay. not. We don't I care. did have a guy during the Canada Cup threaten to come down and punch me over <laughs> the uh, over the French Canadian accent I was doing. And everyone was like, don't worry, Staps, we love you. Okay, uh, let's take a look at the standings for, we do. for your Asia. Yeah, the Wolverines, or Wolverines as some would call them, the Stars, the Royals, the Aviators, all four of those teams did not play today, but the Berlin Bears did, Joe, and they've picked up a few points. Yes. They're now 12 points behind Paris. The Ugh. unfortunate news for them is that Paris is in the cube on Wednesday to wrap up uh, Heat 3 play, so Paris still has time to uh, to really extend their lead. We see Rome there, eight points behind Berlin. Rome is in the cube tomorrow, and uh, boy, these two teams are in big trouble, and uh, at least Brian was able to give, pick up six valuable points here today. So we are nearing the end of Heat 3 already, am yeah, I correct? we're almost halfway through. Thursday will be the last, or Wednesday, sorry. I thought we were Monday today. What day are we today? Today's Monday. Oh, wow. So Tomorrow Wednesday is Tuesday. Tuesday. That's the one? You Wednesday. can tell because it's the second day of the week. That's why it's Tuesday. Oh. Well, how do you explain Wednesday? Th uh, there's three slashes and a W. Love it. I cannot go on beyond that's that. Pretty, so stop, that's pretty good. So stop messing with me, Eric Dennis. Gotcha. Let's take a look at tomorrow's fight card. Who do we got in the cube? Same bat time, same bat channel tomorrow. Yeah, we've got the Emperor's Walter Tricarici making hey. his cube debut. Uh, he was replaced last time because Walter he was Walter Tricarici. Close. Walter Tricarici. That's very yeah. close to what you were saying. Yeah. But the Emperor, the fourth round draft pick, best friends with Mustafa Kanit. Not the worst guy to be best friends with. Speaking of best friends, everyone wants to be Chance Cornuth's uh, best friend because the man has been winning everything. Sort of sucks that he's the second most successful player this year on his team as Fedor Holtz has won even more than Chance Cornuth, which I did not think was even possible money-wise, but it has happened. Uh, Fedor again on Saturday winning another Aria High Roller. It's officially called the Fedor, Fedor. Holtz Invitational from now on. Fade the door. 
Yeah. Oh my goodness, that even works. That works. Fade the door. He's sometimes he's, I'm sure he'll do it. I'm sure he does it all the time. He fades a lot of things. Guys, I think we're just gonna wrap it up. I yeah. think we're just gonna. We're yeah, just it's gonna time get, for us to go. Let's just get out of here. Let's just go have a day. Look, it's it's like ten after twelve. We can go to the pool or something. Nice. You want to go hit the pool? Maybe? Yeah. We well, our, with our looks. Yeah. yeah let's just. We're but in. We'll meet some girls. All right. Uh, yeah. So that's it for today's episode of the GPL Summer Series. Once again, tune in tomorrow, 10:45 a.m. local time. We will be right back here. Thanks very much to Brian Rast and to Kevin McPhee for Laura Cornelius and Eric Dennis. I am Joe Stapleton. Smell you later. Can't get enough of the GPL? Head over to globalpokerleague.com for the most complete and up-to-date standings, schedule, stats, and information on your favorite team, as well as full-length match replays, highlights, and epic hands from all of our matches, and much, much more.